So, all right, let's get to this. So a lot of leadership grumbling right now, and I'm seeing it in the news about Gen Z. And I just want to park here for a second, right? I'm pulling into a parking lot, and we are in the leadership parking lot right now. And leaders, you need to pay attention to this. Because I think that Gen Z, single-handedly as a generation, uh, may be creating some of the greatest leadership challenges that we have seen in a long time, but also simultaneously create leadership opportunity like we've not seen in a long time. So what I mean by parking here is I want to start by saying stop buying into the social media viral videos of some of these Gen Z kids that are saying some pretty ludicrous stuff about how hard it is to work a 40-hour week and whatever the stuff that's out there. Um, they are not representative of an entire generation. That's unfair. Secondly, how about you re-engage with your memory and think back to when you were in your 20s and 30s? Now, Gen Z's in their 20s. But I just want you to think back to your view of the world and how drastically it has changed from the time you were in your 20s and the time that you were a teenager and, 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 and uh, navigating high school and that, that bridge to adulting, as they call it. Now, I want you to think about that, leaders, specifically leaders, because because you bear a tremendous responsibility here. You didn't create the world in which we live, but you are leading in the world in which we live. And so... You have to navigate it. So I think we have to start there. Uh, I don't think that this generation is any lazier than any previous generation. I think that's just nonsense. It's garbage. But this generation of workers, Gen Z, has had circumstances, has had advantages and disadvantages that are very different than the advantages and disadvantages that my generation had Gen X following the boomers. It's just a different world. Um, I remember the first campaign I worked on, political campaign, I had a pager. And so when my boss uh, at the campaign headquarters in the middle of the state needed to talk to me, and I'm running four congressional districts down in the southeast corner of the state, um, and he needed to talk to me, he paged me. And I got a page, and then I, if I was not in the office, I had one of those Motorola brick phones, and I would call him, and then he would tell me what he needed me. But that's the world that I entered the workforce. We used pagers. I remember like five years later, the BlackBerry was invented, and we thought we were living on Mars. I went to college and didn't have a computer in my room, and we didn't have the internet in my four years of college. So I just... I mean, let's just understand the world in which these young workers have been raised in. It's a different world. All right, enough of this setup. But I, I just think it is it is really incumbent on leaders to to not have such a short memory. And I think we got to stop with this generation is lazier. I don't think they're lazier. I do think they're more entitled, and I think those are two different things. Because I think entitlement comes down to expectation, and I think laziness is a choice. I do think there's a big difference. A, a person chooses to be lazy. I think a person has to fight entitlement. I think entitlement can almost kind of happen by osmosis. Both are bad, entitlement and laziness, very bad. But I do think there's a difference. I think laziness is worse than entitlement because entitlement is based on expectations. And I do think that every young generation that comes out has different expectations than the previous generation, and it's based on culture. So enough of the lecture, but I do think it's really important for leaders to understand and coworkers of Gen Z to understand this stuff. All right, now, so I was on Fox News, I was on Fox and Friends uh, uh, about a week or so ago, and they were asking me about Gen Z and are they prepared for the workforce? And and so uh, I, I basically said, look, um, I don't think they're as prepared as they need to be, but that's on parents, and then it's on leaders. Leaders, it's not your fault, but it's your responsibility to lead them. And, and, and so they have different expectations. 
So a uh, recent survey uh, came out that employers are trying to avoid hiring Gen Z. Well, good luck with that because you're not going to be able to avoid them. It's like the kid that picked on you at school and your mom and dad says, just avoid them. Well, okay, great. How am I going to do that? I can for a while, but I can't completely avoid them. And leaders aren't going to be able to avoid hiring Gen Z. So this is nonsense to me when I see a survey like this. I, I, I would gently and respectfully challenge leaders who say this. I would say, I get that you want to avoid it. I want to avoid eating broccoli, but it's good for me. You're going to have to learn how to lead this generation. 58% of those leaders say they're unprepared for the workforce. They might be, but welcome to leadership. Uh, this is interesting. Some research from a guy named John Freezy. Uh, he said this in a quote about some research that he has been doing. He's the senior managing director and head of global labor strategy for a consulting firm in Cura. This is what he said, and I agree with him. He said, quote, Gen Z is not a lazy generation. It is entitled, and I agree, and they're entitled because they have the freedom to make a more broad set of decisions than older generations that have had and now do have financial obligations. They're just different. He's right. Here's specifically what he's talking about. Over half of younger adults are living at home with their parents, so therefore they're not carrying rent, they're not carrying a mortgage, a lot less pressure financially, a lot more freedom as a result of that. They aren't getting married and having kids at the rates of previous generations, so again, not as much responsibility. Hey, no mortgage, no rent, no kids, no spouse. Again, I'm not commenting on that part in those decisions. I'm just saying that's where we stand, and therefore they have so much more freedom. So entitlement takes on a different definition when you go, do they feel like they should have more options? Yeah, you know why? Because they do in major areas of their life that aren't work-related. So that's important to understand. Now, Gen Z also wants a lot of flexibility when it comes to work specifically the lifestyle that I live. No, I got to work, but how do I want it to impact my lifestyle? Why do they want this? Well, I said this on Fox News. Every generation looks at the previous generation and generations. They look at their parents and grandparents. How do their parents, how do their grandparents talk about work? How did their parents' lifestyle or how was their parents' or grandparents' lifestyle affected by work? Gen Z, they're not different than any previous they We all look at previous generations, and whether it be in parenting or marriage or health or religion, any area of our life, previous generations always affect the next generation as, as to how they decide to live their life. It's just natural. It's observation. And so one of the things that is happening is a lot of these leaders are saying, well, Gen Z, they won't stay with me very long. They're moving they're fat. They want a lot of upward mobility. They want to change jobs. They want a lot of flexibility. Yeah, guess what? That's not a Gen Z issue. The millennials before them, I remember talking about it on this show six years ago. Guess what? Millennials change jobs at a faster rate than Gen X, my generation. Big freaking deal. Doesn't make them flakes. It's just the nature of work as it continues to evolve. But it's also about their age. Younger generations, by nature, are less tied down. So were you, Gen X. So were you, boomers. When you were younger, you had less commitments, less responsibility, and as a result, you wanted different things. So, wrapping up. Job hopping is not a new trend that's exclusive to Gen Z, number one. And kids being young and green and not as prepared as the 30-year-old, 40-year-old, 50-year-old on your staff is not new. So what has to happen? Leaders, where there have been cultural and parenting deficiencies with young people, you have to step in and lead them, which means teaching and training, encouraging, rewarding, being consistent, being patient, showing them the way. They will step up. I guarantee it. No need to throw your hands in the air. How about getting your hands dirty? There's no reason why Gen Z can't be the greatest working generation of all time. 
it's going to come down to leadership. What will you do, leaders? I'm here to help. 